hello. Um, so while I am stuck in my apartment with COVID, I thought that I would rate all of the books that I read in 2022. I ended up reading 10 books. My goal was to read 12 because I read 10 last year, so I wanted to up it by two. Um, ended up, uh, I won't be able to, to read um, two more. Um, it's just too close um, to the end of the year. Um, but I, I had a lot going on, so I'm not going to beat myself up about it. Um, so, uh, this video I'll just be talking about the 10 books that I read and why I rated them, how I rated them. Um, so, yeah, let's, let's get started. Okay, so coming in at number 10 is One Italian Summer. Um, the book is about this main character and her mom dies and so they had a plan to go to Italy so the main character the daughter she ends up going to Italy ends up like kind of time traveling and sees her younger mom there in the flesh and so that's really weird and so she has to figure out like how have I done this why like what's the purpose of me time traveling um, and then she also meets this new guy while she's there. Um, it's definitely not my normal genre that I read. Um, I would consider it like kind of romance, kind of just basic fiction, um, which is why I put it at number 10. Um, it was just kind of basic, normal, like nothing fancy, nothing crazy happened. I just, it was just a normal novel. Um, so that's why it's number two. And so then coming in at number nine, I finally caved and read a Colleen Hoover book. Um, because, I mean, she has been like probably the most popular author this year by far. Um, and so I decided to read Verity because I didn't want to read a strict romance book like it ends with us. So I chose Verity. Um, and it was just, it was a whole trip. Um, Verity, I don't, the story is very kind of dark, but not, not really compared to some of the other stuff I read. Um, everyone talks about this book and talks about the, the twist at the ending. And so I got, I was reading it. I was like, well, it, this, this is, this is okay. You know, this is going somewhere. And then it got to the twist at the end and I was thinking, well, where's, where's the twist? And so the twist to me was nothing special. It didn't really affect the book in any way, I don't think. So I do think this book is somewhat overhyped, but um, maybe that's just because it's not the typical genre that I read. Um, so that's why it came in at number nine. Okay, so number eight is Orcs and Crate by Margaret Atwood. Um, I really like Margaret Atwood's books. I really like The Handmaid's Tale. Um, so and this was a reread for me. I first read Orcs and Crake in college for um, one of my classes. And so I wanted to reread it this year. Um, and so Orcs and Crake uh, takes place in the future where um, it, there's just supposedly just one man left on earth with these creatures that his best friend created. Um, and so it just follows um, him in the present. And then it uh, he goes through flashbacks to talk about what happened and how the future got this way. Um, it gives me a bit of anxiety, but um, overall it's still a good read. So that's why I put it at number eight. So number seven is The Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern. Um, I've read Aaron Morgenstern before with The Night Circus, so I had some high expectations. And so I actually read this book along with um, a friend, um, which was nice. And so we would, you know, read a few chapters and then talk about it um, on the phone, which was nice. Um, so definitely I got through it much quicker than I would have otherwise. Um, Erin Morgenstern, she has this ability to just draw you in with the imagery and the language and just, 
it's a real special talent that she has and her way of writing is just something I've never seen before. Um, so it, it was definitely a good book. Um, the romance, I think, was a bit questionable, like how these two characters got together and like fell in love so quickly. I was kind of like, uh, I don't, I don't know about that, but everything else was, was uh, really good. So if you haven't re read anything about Aaron Morgan Stern, um, I, I really recommend it. So next is No Longer Human by Daisai Osamu. Um, it's a Japanese classic. Um, I read it because I really like the anime character after named after da Daisai Osamu. Um, and so I wanted to read the book. It's a short book. It was the first book I read this year. Um, and it was good. Um, for, it was the first Japanese classic I've read. Um, it was kind of, it was a relatable book, but it shouldn't be relatable, you know? Um, it's part autobiography, part fiction, which is kind of why I liked it. Um, it's very depressing, but also realistic. Um, for people who were living during that period we're going through. Um, so if you want to get into Japanese classics, I highly recommend that one. Um, it, it, like I said, it is kind of depressing, but it was still really, really good. Okay, so next is Doom Messiah, which is the sequel to the first Doom book. Uh, so Doom Messiah um, was really, really good. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, it was a great continuation to the story. There were amazing plot twists that I did not expect to happen this early in the series. Um, that just like blew my mind. Like I had to sit down and like think about it for a few minutes. Um, I did, the one negative thing that I didn't like was I was missing a couple of characters that we got introduced to in the first book. So like Gurney and Lady Jessica were not present in this book, which it takes place, you know, sometime in the future. So I do get that they may be living elsewhere, but but for those characters to be so present and then to just not be in the second book really uh, was kind of a downfall for me. But I still rated that novel like a nine, eight out of 10. It was still, Fantastic, and I can't wait to read the next one uh, next year. So coming in at number four is Gideon the Ninth, and I actually haven't finished this one yet. Um, I'm still, I'm halfway through, but I am going to finish it um, within like the next couple of weeks, but I'm putting it at number four ahead of time. Um, it is a YA novel. It's the only YA that I've read this year, it's fantasy, um, and the reason I read it is because of the huge, like, high reviews that it has, and it is a series, um, so it's fantasy, and it's not focusing solely on romance that a lot of YA books are kind of leaning towards these days, which is why I don't really read YA anymore, because I just don't like romance in books, and so this book it's able to have everything that you need without being focused on romance um and gideon the ninth is also hilarious both her character and harrow they have great banter they are both hilarious gideon especially has a great sense of humor which i really liked i found myself like like chuckling to myself a few times while reading this novel and so I think that's really great, which a lot of characters lack in YA. Um, and I really just wanted a strong female character that isn't the center of like a love triangle. So th this was a perfect novel. So next, I'm actually going to talk about my second favorite book. So I'm gonna talk about my second favorite book of the year first, and then we'll get back to the third, third one, because the third one and the first one kind of go together. So I want to talk about my second favorite book first, which is A Little Life. Um, Little Life, modern classic. I mean, people are going to be reading this for required reading in the future. I mean, it's just, it's 900 pages. It's a behemoth 
Um, it's absolutely brutal. Um, if you want to read this book, I mean, please, please, please look up the trigger warnings beforehand. I mean, it delves into some really dark stuff. Um, I had to stop a couple of times while reading because I felt nauseous for what happened to Jude. Um, and like the main thing is like it's severe abuse, extreme uh, abuse against the disabled community. So just fair warning, but um, it is so beautifully written. I mean, it just flows perfectly. The, everything is sequenced well. The characters are, you fall in love with them. I mean, everything about this novel is just perfect. I mean, it's so beautiful, but so tragic at the same time. I, I mean, I cannot recommend A Little Life highly enough. Um, okay, so let's talk about books number three and number one. Um, so the reason I wanted to talk about these two together is because they fall under the same genre. So they are both modern classics and they are both a new genre, not a, I don't know if it's a new genre, but for me it's new. It's Dark Academia, um, which I now have fallen in love with. I'm down the rabbit hole. I'm obsessed with Dark Academia now. Um, so first for number three is The Secret History by Dona Tart, which I haven't finished yet. I'm going to finish. I, yeah, I, I know, I know. So The Secret History, um, is such a good book even though I haven't finished it yet. Um, great characters. I mean immediately I was like what happened to Bunny? Why are these characters like what's going to happen? How are they going to fall down this hole? It's suspenseful. Um, I mean and the atmosphere is great. New England. Love that. Um, so it's just everything is amazing. Donut Heart she has this ability to just draw you in. And I think it's just like the the grandmother, I guess, of dark academia books. Um, it, it, I mean, it's just perfect. So now going to my number one book of the year, my top book. It is now my second favorite book of all time. Uh, that's how good it is. It's If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. This book. I could talk about this book for I feel like an hour. This book is 10 out of 10, amazing, and it's apparently being made into like a TV show, which I don't really like. I don't like when they do that, um, but it's so good. It's like I said, Dark Academia. If you like Shakespeare, you're going to love this book. These characters, I believe there's seven, um, seven characters, they're at this school in England where they are performing Shakespeare. So, and there is a murder, like in all of Dark Academia, there has to be a murder that takes place at a school. Um, there's romance, there's drama. So everything that you want is in this novel. It is so beautifully written. It's, I've already said that for like every book on here, but um, it is just, I mean, it's perfect. I immediately fell in love with the story. I mean, and then the twist and turns in, in the middle and the end. I mean, it is just fantastic. Um, so that is why it, ca it came in number one. Um, so yeah, those are my top 10 books of 2022. Um, and so I am going to finish the two that I haven't finished. Um, and then uh, so for 2023, I'm going to try to do 12 books again, um, but I, but I'm you know gonna you know try and, and do one, or n not one but 10. If I can at least get 10, then I will feel accomplished with myself. So uh, I'm gonna read the third Dune book. I'm gonna read Babel, another dark academia book. Um, but I have a lot on my list. So, uh, I, I, I'm excited. The past two years have been really, really great for books. So I'm excited for next year. So, uh, that, that's all for this video. I just wanted to talk about books, basically, um, and give you recommendations. So, um, okay. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.